Hello there folks and welcome to the stream. My name is Mike D'Angelo aka That Tell Us Guy. We are back today in the jungle but we are not going to be here very long I don't believe because same thing as last Tuesday what we have to do is Huzzah! Uh, so we are done with our our base map, and we've also done a couple of um, variants that will show up on the Patreon on... Well, actually, it'll be tomorrow. Um, while we're here, maybe what we can do is another variant like we did last week. And I think, Rihanna, you're probably the only person who's in the stream right now. Do you have any ideas for, for variants that you want to see or anything like that? And don't say wildfire. What about glowy? <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> what about glowy? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, all right, so let's see what we can do about glowy. It'll be a nice, real quick one. Fireflies and bioluminescent plankton. All right, so let's go to our night filter real quick. This will be a, a real easy one to make. So we're going to go... You know what was weird? I feel like the... Uh, never mind. Just talking to myself. Don't mind me. Um, and let's do... I was gonna say let's do a, another filter that's like tree coverage and stuff like that because you can do, where is it? The forest lighting. But I feel like that's too much for where we are. So we're going to skip that. There's another map that we're gonna be working on over the next couple of weeks that will use that a little bit more effectively. But I think even like a light version of this is not gonna look great. Although that's not terrible. Let's go to our forest lighting and we're going to dial that back even further. Oh, you know what? That actually lightens it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense for what we have right now. If we had a much busier forest, I think it would make sense. Let's just go back to. And we'll do like a point two and see how we like that. Except every freaking time we do something like that. Incarnate doesn't like me. All right, so we've got something like that. I feel like that looks pretty nice. Only trouble that I'm seeing is that it's covering areas that we wouldn't want. All right, I am just going to get rid of that texture altogether. We'll just use the night filter. And let's do those, not fireflies, but luma bugs. Let's see, do we have an insect? Oh, dear. Computer's running slow again. Alright, and we've got the scarabs, which we can use in the butterflies and stuff like that. Rainbow flutters aren't such a bad idea. Um, I feel like we might be able to make the scarabs work for us if we use these ones. So grab these and size them differently. Oh my god! Now let's try and mess with these a little bit. Move the brightness up a little bit. Contrast can be whatever. Let's move that out of the uh, out of that little lane there. Let's go into our shadow options real quick. I don't really know what 
this is going to be what I want it to. But give me some shadow blur. Okay, let's throw a couple of these around in some places. We'll keep the same kind of flying little thing that we got there, but we'll mess with the rotation so that we know where we're going. We have them all kind of going towards the center of the map. And each time we do this, we're going to mess with the hue a little bit as well. So we'll make this one. I don't even know what color that is. This one's kind of like a pinky color, a magenta, if you will. So we're going to get rid of those, move the shadow blur to, I can't remember what we were doing. Shadow blur all the way up. Let's make some comparisons. What did you do in their shadow settings? All right, so it was 25 and the intensity wasn't that high. Little glowy bugs. You can just throw a couple of them around here and there. I wonder if I can get like a moonlight kind of thing. Spotlight right out there in the world. Oh god. Hello there, Gift of Gabby. Gift of Gabby says, hi, how are you doing today? Hope you're doing okay. And I am doing okay. Gift of Gabby also says, I'm tired. And I am feeling that 100%. <laughs> I get that. All right, we've got this one coming from over here. So we'll have it right over by our monkey. And you know what I just noticed? These are in the night layer, I think. Think so we can have that one. Well, we're gonna keep it around the same size. Gift of Gabby says, "Yeah, but I'm a little sick too. Just got it started at the six, so I don't know how sick I'm gonna get. Well, hopefully it's a quick passing cold or whatever you got, and you feel better soon. Nobody likes feeling sick." Something like that. I'm gonna do a couple like little swarms here and there. Some of them hanging out underneath flowers and plants and stuff. This one's got to hide out from the birds. Definitely need that. I need at least one more, so we'll grab that one and let's change the hue. I want something kind of like a little green. I know that green is about here, so if we move that over here, that should be good too. And the nice thing is because we copied instead of throwing another stamp on it, it doesn't look too bad. Oh. We are going to do some rainbow flutters, because why not? Mm. 
we've got some Julia butterflies and some blue morphos. Let's do some jungle ones. These ones look like they're a little bit crazier than the ones that I usually use. There you go. A little even bigger than that. a little bit so that they come through okay mess with the hue a little bit sure that we're doing Rihanna's bioluminescent plankton. <laughs> Ooh, that one is lower than the tree. Got to be higher than the tree. Alright, so we've got these piranhas. Let's see if we can get some other fish that we like or crabs or something like that we've got these guys I feel like they would be able to do what we want but I want to make sure that we're not doing anything too crazy we've got the sharks the dolphins the koi fish most of these things are ingredients so they're going to be a little bit crazy. We're not going to worry too much about those. We could probably make do with a shark. And then we just got to shrink it down a lot. And we got to get rid of that shadow. Got a little froggy up there. Gone shadow. No, maybe a little bit. Every time. And then let's go with a gloss up that's not quite as bad. Bump this up a little bit more. I don't mind a little bit of a shadow. Let's mess with the hue a bit. the shadow there but what we can do is we can copy this over here this one's swimming upstream change the color of that one too electric eels perhaps Rihanna says so we have the eels I feel like we have snakes animal bones we've got the sea snake over here the problem with the sea snake is i think that it's going to look a little silly in the water here since the water's so clear for other things use a snake but electrify it so we've got these snakes over here that we might be able to use we might be able to use this guy here Another froggy over there, a little lily pad. So what I'll typically do is either reduce the opacity or throw it down, flatten it to the background, and then you know do whatever we need to do. Let's see, how am I going to electrify it? Let's go 
don't want to make it yellow like a Pikachu. something like that but then brighten it we'll do that and I think we'll just do the lowered opacity this time around and I wonder what we could do to make it feel like well I mean you don't see any electric rays or anything like that this honestly might be it just a fun little nighttime animal menagerie we are at like that halfway point, so what we'll do is we'll call it here, I think. This is a fun little quaint nighttime one. So let's do, before I actually save anything, let's actually call it a clone. Nighttime animals. And while that's saving, I'm gonna go over to our sponsor. And now, a word from our sponsors. Eager to show that you can write an excellent book without following too closely to established tropes, new author Albert T. Franklin turns readers into fans with his debut, Searching for Zen, A Tale of Divine Destiny. Join Zen, a boy with an incredible gift who is bound to shape the form of humanity for ages to come. Franklin weaves a captivating story around this powerful being and endears Zen to many people who are integral to his life. A fellowship is created that will be one for the ages and one that readers will love to root for. If you're looking for an uplifting fantasy that outshines the darkness, look no further. Check out our promo for Searching for Zen, A Tale of Divine Destiny, on the TELUS website today. All right there, folks, so we are back. We are right now uh, jumping to our next map of the evening, which is going to be our graveyard. We haven't been here since, I think this was like our ninth map, like of all time, so we're definitely going to... Um, have a little bit of fun coming back to this area as you can see i did a little bit of work so far i think if i was going to guess right around here was our break point um where we kind of moved from one version of this map to the rest and you can kind of see because there's a little bit of overlap with some of the uh some of like that kind of dirty mucky kind of ground kind of stuff good news is i already have the points of interest that i know that i want to use and some of them are already placed on the map um, we've got four really big pieces that we're going to have. Um, the only one that I haven't really thrown onto the map yet is the, the graves. We have a couple of graves at the entrance of the graveyard and it just kind of felt a little undercooked. We just have, you know, four graves. We're going to have a much bigger set over here. Um, they're going to be graves that have been kind of in place for a long time. That'll be what we do for probably the rest of this stream today. But the other things that we have is this fissure where the uh, the undead are going to be kind of crawling up and out of and things like that. And then we also have, um, I thought it would be kind of cool to have like a, an undertaker's cart with a horse that got stuck in the mud and they're dragging a couple of coffins. Um, so we did a little bit of work kind of throwing very tiny little horse footprints and stuff like that and some streaks from where the wheels hit the mud and everything like that. And this area over here is where the, the horse no longer has the traction to get things moving. So let's move into, like I said, we'll probably start with the graves. So what we'll start with is down here. We've got some graves and let's see, we want to make sure that we're calling it the right thing. I think I think it's fine. Are these broken graves? Yeah. Let's start with some fresh, clean ones. Some nice, fresh gravestones. Some happy little gravestones. Where did my grave go? Okay. Just need to make sure that they are in the right place as far as positioning goes. Kind of like this one being, <clears throat> excuse me, underneath the tree a little bit. What we're gonna do is have 
don't know if I want to have a full gap. Down here we had two full tiles between every grave, and I don't know if we want to have these so much closer that it's just, you know, one per. I feel like that doesn't give the characters a lot of movement. So what we'll do is we'll actually keep them a little bit full, uh, further apart. Not two tiles, mind you. I think that's a nice setup. And what we'll do is, like I said, we're gonna have a decent amount. So we're gonna have 10 feet in between. I feel like that's plenty. And as you can see by my note, uh, one of these graves will have, it'll be the, uh, the Legend of Zelda style. You move it and a uh, set of stairs shows up. Right now, what you can also see is I'm using the same exact headstones, and we're going to uh, adjust those as we need to. But I'm just getting a feel for where everything is going to be, and then we'll make corrections. Okay, and then one more ought to do it. so we can get rid of that. And let's scooch that off to the side because we really don't need that either. Folks, while I'm doing this, I might as well ask, uh, if you are checking this stream out, please make sure to, uh, to follow. We're very close to that 50 person number that we need to hit in order to uh, apply for affiliate status. That would be great. All right, let's do a couple of other ones so that we can kind of move some stuff around. And get out. I don't like these tiny little ones, so. These are on the line. Some of them are just going to show up with like a nice little stripe between them. That'll look a lot nicer when you're doing the uh, the ungridded version. So we're losing a little bit of space down here because this is kind of the path up to the bigger crypt here. And I think what we'll end up doing is let's see if we can't get a composite because I don't need anything too crazy. We have like a graveyard building that we can use. Shrine tiles, I think maybe in the Gothic horror there might be some stuff we can use. There we go, something simple. Some Gothic house composites. Nice square building. overselling it too much doesn't really need to be that crazy but because really all I'm going to be doing is covering it with the roof doink little crypt 
let's do got a little more road coming up to it. Alright, let's do a save real quick. Can you hear Maisie snoring from upstairs because it's loud? Is she still on the cushion? So cute. It's all bundled up. All right. Let's see what we got real quick. Can't really do too much with moving that. We might be able to shrink these this down a little bit. So it gets settled with age and stuff like that. And then let's go into some of our other brushes real quick and see what we can do about making it look a little nicer. And by nicer, I mean worse in some cases. I did not hear her. and I do not hear her. But I'm excited to hear her when I go downstairs. That doesn't really look right to me. So these graves, they're all pretty old at this point. I don't think that you're going to see anything too far out of the ordinary with uh, with how these look. I was going to make them look like they were recently interred and stuff like that, but I feel like that doesn't make any sense. But you know what does? Flowers. I don't really need gothic horror, but we do have some other stuff that we can grab. I kind of want something that looks like a bouquet. But I don't see any bouquets. Yeah, let's just do a couple of other things here and there. First, let's dial that back, and we're going to change this so that's a little less vibrant. I don't want it to look so much like it's popping out or anything. We won't use those torch blooms or anything like that use use flowers like these here and there but again what we'll do is we'll kind of dial back the saturation so it doesn't look as pretty we got a red one let's do a purple Wondering whether potted plants make sense. I feel like one won't, you know, cause too much harm. Let's put one potted plant there. Again, kind of dial back. Doesn't look quite so vibrant. That just looked like a dead turtle, so we'll keep that one vibrant. Uh, let's see. All right, and I think what we'll do is we'll focus on this guy next so see if we can't make some dead bodies that look like they were either cut down or the magic failed or something like that so we got some desiccated bodies Fills up a pretty big one. Eh, five feet's not too bad. Well, actually, let's turn it sideways because at that point it's a little bit bigger. 
let's dial it back to something like click. They don't all need to be red or anything like that, so we're going to mess with the saturation of these guys too. want any of them to be red husks or anything like that. So we grab that. What else do we want to do here? Oh, you know what? We can't just have that one tree up there. So let's do some more creepy trees. Creepy trees look so stupid if they're not angled the right way. side and that way it's not totally up on top of the horse or anything like that and what else do we got over here got our little gargoyles and everything up there maybe just kind of blend everything in to make it look like there are certain things that kind of combine it I feel like there's not really a great spot for it put this there for now and then probably get rid of it because I might not like it and what else do we got a couple of lanterns so we can grab one of those Kind of doing that with the idea that maybe that's not a crypt, maybe that's like the Undertaker's house or something like that. We've got the same thing over there, so it's not super far fetched. All right, next step. It is time to resize. Snap to the grid. And actually, did I nail it the first try? Nice. Alright, so we're not going to get rid of anything as far as stamps go or anything like that. I don't think that there's going to be a tremendous amount that we still have to do to this graveyard map. There wasn't a lot in the original. Um, and as you can see, I kind of did a decent amount of the work prior to this video, so we can always move on to whatever comes next. Um, let me see what I've got planned for us. So the graveyard is the next, oh, the next one is gonna be really cool. So if we can start that tomorrow, I think that would be a fun one for us. Um, let us bring up the other thing that I wanted to talk about. So as you may know, um, a while back, we did in November a Kickstarter for 50 maps of Telest. Um, it really ends up being closer to 200 because of all the variants that we have and everything. We now have the 50 maps of Telest on Drive-Thru RPG at a very attractive price. Um, if you bought all the maps separately, you'd be spending close to $180. But if you are going to buy all these maps all together with their variants, with their points of interest, um, you would end up spending less than $30 for 
50 maps and 160 variants or something like that. So it is a really great price. You get to see all the maps that you would get. Um, as you can see, the list is pretty exhaustive. And, uh, and after that, you can see if there's any other maps that you want because we're still releasing them on a, uh, a pretty consistent basis. So uh, let's head back. Wow, are we still loading? Taking far too long, sir, and or madam. I'll tell you what, we're just resizing, so I'm going to let that thing go. And in the meantime, let's uh, switch over to our show closing. So folks, on the screen right now, you should see all the places that you can find Telus out there on the internet. Uh, Telus.com is a great place to start because that'll lead you in a lot of different directions for all the projects that we're working on. We have two premium sites that are going to show off a lot of our tabletop goods. Patreon.com slash Telus has been kind of repurposed to mostly focus on the maps um, because on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays we do some kind of thing with, you know, tabletop. Um, disingenuous jockey milk, go! Um, we have point of interest documents that are typically dropping on Mondays and Fridays and then whatever map we were working on that week ends up going out on Wednesdays. So uh, tomorrow the jungle map that we started this stream with is going to go live on Patreon. That's already set up um, we just need to add the uh, the nighttime animals variant that we just made. Telus.etsy.com is where you can find a lot of our physical premium goods. So you can find our battle maps in jumbo mouse pad form. Um, we've got bookmarks and stickers and posters and the Telus art book and the Quantum Quest tabletop game and Rihanna's Weird Witch Wands. Those are magical, handcrafted, one-of-a-kind wands. Um, in addition, you can find those on tiktok.com slash at weird witch wands. And um, you can see her working her magic on those wands and showing them off. And our second TikTok channel is tiktok.com slash at tales of Telst, where you can see things like Maisie snoring her butt off. Two other sites that I want to bring your attention to youtube.com slash at world of Telst is where you can find these videos after they're gone from the Twitch channel. But twitch.tv slash, excuse me talking too fast twitch.tv slash that tellist guy is the place that you want to be if you want to chat with us live give us ideas for variants that you want to see um and just figure out what's going on in our day to day but that is going to wrap us up for tonight uh just a quick one because as i was saying to gift of gabby earlier i am tired as well um so we're going to wrap things up and we will be back tomorrow to probably finish up the the graveyard and uh and look at the next map in our set so in the meantime i hope you have a good one and i miss you